called Blaine Grey here, Plastic for Beginners, and today we're going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be building this stud wall. So basically this used to be an old set of wardrobes. We've knocked it out and this area, what you can see, is where the built-in wardrobes were. They were rubbish. <laughs> so basically what we're doing is this wall here, to the right, we're going to follow that through into the existing here. So we want to make that one straight wall. So. There's a few things we want to get out of the way first. What we want to do is map out and line where this wall is going to be. Um, the first thing we will address is that this wall is not plumb. <laughs> so it is, it's quite far out to be fair. It's not too bad there, but it's, it's quite out of plumb. But the problem is when you have got an existing wall you work working to, you want to follow what's already there. There's no point me making my wall completely plumb when what I'm matching into isn't. So what we're going to do is mark out from the existing wall and get all our markings from there. So the first thing we want to do is run a straight edge through and mark the end point. So that's one way of doing it. You do the same there. The problem is with the top, there's actually a bit of coving, so I'm going to show you a bit of a cheat to get around it. Looking at this little bad boy, this is a laser level. So it's just a fairly cheap one from Amazon to be fair. Like I said, this is a plastering channel, but I used to do a lot of carpentry back in the day. But I've never done it day in, day out, which is why I've never bought the best of the best. But this is actually quite a good company, it's called Tack Life, and it's just a very average laser level. But it's going to help us tremendously at this point. So what we want is to get it on the vertical. So, got the laser level here. And what we're doing it, we're running along that line there. We're doing it so it just skims the wall. You can literally just see it skimming the area you're working on. You want to try and get it as in line as you can with that wall. So what we're doing, we are going to plaster board over the whole thing. So we're, over, we're going to overboard this section as well. So what we want is the line to run. You can just see it. See that there? So it's literally just skimming it. That little bit of wallpaper that's showing, as soon as we take that away, the line's in, it runs flush. So now we've got a decent line at the bottom. We've got the same at the top. So what we're going to do is put a quick pencil mark down. There. And right at the forward edge here. And then we know exactly. Grab my hand up. We know that we can then just follow through with the straight edge. Right, so we've got a line. A good thing to do now is to run a timber in line with the markings we've got and then just see if it runs through on the wall. So that's what I'll do. Okay, so I've got the level. I'm going to do is run it from that point through. Actually looks pretty good, which is always nice. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is mark all the way through there. I'm not going to fix it down just because things change. And what I'm going to do is build the wall up and then follow it through and then fix it into place. It's actually sometimes easier to start again because when you're working into an existing wall you've already got set parameters there but if you're building from scratch you literally set down, put your uh, timber down on the floor where you want it to be, parallel it from the walls aside and then just build up plumb. So actually this is harder than building a stud wall from scratch. Um, but again, once you've got your line set up in place, it's not that much of a challenge. What we're going to do now is I'm going to cut two uprights. And the way to do that is I'm going to put timbers one on top of each other. Instead of trying to balance at the top, holding one in the air. Put one, put the um, header with the bottom plate, put them on top of each other. And then we're going to get a measurement up and see what the up, first upright is going to be. And then we're just going to slowly start building the wall. Okay, so I've 
so I've got a measurement, what I'm going to do is just show you how to cut some timber just the old school way with a handsaw. So you get your measurement. And then you can use your saw to get your 90 degree angle. That is your 90 degree there, that's your 45. Just rest it on the side, do the front edge. And then you also do the side. Now it is easy with a skill saw, I'm going to get mine out in a minute, but I sometimes like just using a hand saw. So you put your thumb roughly where the line is, obviously use the length of your thumb as a guide, and then you want to cut on the right side of the mark where the waste is going to be. So just start it off. Then my aim is to follow that line, that line, and then we know it's going to be a completely square cut. Put your foot on the rest. Then you start. Completely square, straight cut. Now we're going to test it. So now I'm going to offer the timber up. Let's see how it sits. Okay, so that will hit in. If anything, it's a tiny bit tight, but you don't want too much, too much of a pull because you might lift the rafters up, you might move the ceiling. So you don't want the timber to be too tight, but when that hits in, that should be nice. So that's a nice tight fit. I'm going to get another one cut and then we're going to leverage the top plate from the bottom with two uprights. Now before we do start fixing or putting anything in place, we need to measure a few things. So, because it's obviously a plastering channel, we need to make it easier for the people putting the plasterboards up. So what we need to do is run what we call, as chippies, 400 centres. So, what you do is you run, find your 400 mark, so you measure from the edge of your timber, uh, 400 millimetres I mean, um, I'm going to be talking a lot of millimetres now, so 40 centimetres if you are working that way. So mark four, 400, mark 800, 1200, and keep going. Now what you're going to do, so that's your 400, that's the centre. But what we want to do is measure back 25mm, or 22mm actually, put a solid line there, get your 90 degree, and then mark it. So you've got your 400 centre here, measure back 20, roughly 20mm, 2cm, measure a full line, and then where your 400 is, put a cross. Now this will make sense because what we're going to do is run the timbers from this line here, running upwards. So that's 400 centre, 800 centre, 1200 centre. So then the centre of the plasterboard, the edge of it, will hit the centre of the 12, uh, 1200 timber. So that's why we're doing that. So we're doing the same on the 800. Got 800 here, measure back 2.5 centimetres. Solid lining. Out the X, and that's where we're going to be running our uprights. So now what we're going to do is fix this in place. We're going to offer it up, and then what we're going to do is use the first upright to crimp it. Because it's tight, it's going to hold it in midair. See, I'm working on my own, you might be too. If you're with someone else, it's going to be a lot easier for them just to hold up the top timber to hold it in place, but we're not going to do that. Because I'm on my own. <laughs> so this is a cut upright. And offer this up, follow the lines that are prescribed, and then okay. So that's in place. We've got 
the top plate running in, that's fine up there, it's trapped in. So now we can start running the other uprights in place. We're going to fix it, fix the uprights and then we're just going to gently move the top and bottom until we're completely in line with that wall. So next bit, just going to cut these uprights, cut them in, easy peasy. Well, it was fun doing it by hand, but uh, I'm going to speed things up and get the circular drop saw out. So I'm going to do is cut a load up, whack them in place. See you soon. So I've got a few uprights cut, they're roughly in place, but before we start fixing anything, I want to make sure that everything's running in line. So we've got a laser level, we've got a thin line out, but I want to make sure for certain, now I've got a few uprights, that I'm going to run this straight edge through, and it's going to work. So, first test, I've done the bottom, the bottom's good, so that's good news. I don't know how the wall we're working to is actually a bit bold, but anyway. I want to make sure the top's okay. And actually, it's saying the top needs to come out. So it's not running in line. So, this is why you don't want to fix anything in place because there's so many changes, you know, it's moving all the time. What I'm going to do now is put the top plate where it needs to be, and then I can start fixing the uprights. Now I've got a few in place, I can gauge roughly how we're working. The bottom's good. Just going to adjust the top and then we're good to go. So we have a few uprights in. Just going to check it. It runs through, through the wall through to the timbers. So, we're good. We've got everything in the right place. Now we're literally just filling in the gaps. So what I'm gonna do is cut some, I've got three left, two, three, actually four, because I've got one for the very edge. Now I'm gonna show you how to fix them so they're perfectly plumb and where they need to be. Okay, so we have two uprights to put in. These are the last two. I'm just gonna show you how to fix them in place. And first of all, the thing you wanna check when you have cut them is that you can put them in so they're tight, so obviously you can smack it, they'll hold their own. And that's just so there's a bit of tension between the top. You don't want too much, you don't want to be smashing it in, because what you might do is you might bend the timber at the top, you might actually misform your ceiling and you'll have, that's when you have ridges. So you just want to do it by hand, you want to be able to push it, and you know it's, it's got tension. So that's a good cut, I'll check that one, that's the same. And now I'm going to show you how and when to fix it. So do you remember the markings we ran across? These are the 400 centers, these are the markings. So what we've got is the solid line, and then we've got the center. The reason we put the crosses on, I didn't do it on this actually. The reason we put the crosses on is so that we realize where the timber needs to be. So the timber needs to be on the inside of this line. That cross is the width. So as you can see here, we've got the line I'm gonna do. Get my hammer, which is gently gonna. Right, so now you've got your line, it's in place at the bottom. You can see that. What you do is you make sure that it's got the right, the width and thickness follows all the way through. So it's flush either side of the timber. That's perfect there. So that's the bottom's in the right spot. And what we wanna do is fix the bottom in place first, and then we deal with the upright. Right, for this job, I'm going to use, this is a pass load, this is a nail gun. You don't need to use one of these, it's just that I've got one from the past where I've done lots of carpentry. You can just use screws, wood screws and um, screw them in. Or you can go old school 
and hand nail them in. But I'm just going to show you an example on the pads load. I've got it to hand and it's a brilliant piece of kit if you haven't got one. Very expensive but definitely worth it if you're going to be doing a lot of carpentry. So I'll show you how to fix it anyway. So we've got the upright placed along the line where we need it. What we do is you fix the bottom first and then we're going to mark up. So I'll still start there. bottom in place now I've got to make sure the upright is plumb so that's obviously got a fixed position there so now because it's tight we can move it around put it in the right position where it needs to be the first thing I'm going to do is put it so it's flush with the head so roughly put it in place there and then get your level got some work to do there Bit more. So that's where we want to be. Again, make sure it's flush. One more check. Okay, that's cool. Lock it in place, hold it, grip it. One at the side. On the inside. Okay. And that's it. That's your timber fixed in place. Wait for the puzzle to shut up. <laughs> so the timber fixed in place, it's plumb. Now if you were doing a wall from scratch, you obviously do the other side as well. You'd have to make sure both sides of the timber were plumb. Um, because I've got my governing points at the top and the bottom plate, I'm not going to do that, but if you are doing a wall from scratch, you make side both sides of the timber a nicer plumb. And that means your wall is going to be plumb all the way through. Plumb, by the way, is level upright. So you've got your level, which is horizontal. Horizontal Plumb is when it's level on the upwards. That's what plumb means. So I'm going to fix the last one in place, and then we're going to go into the next stage, which is noggins. Okay, so that's a hard bit done. We've got the wall in place, the uprights are through. Everything's where it needs to be. It's running square with the wall. So really the hard work's done, but now there's one more task to do and we're putting noggins in. Basically this is timber you put halfway along, um, roughly in the middle of where the timbers lie. And what they'll do is they brace the timbers together. So if there's any flex, or if there's a bit of a bow in the timber, it'll pull it in place so then it's straight all the way through. Um, so what you do, in the UK, I used to mark noggins at 1.2 metres, but now there was a bit of change in regulations, got it was a good few years back, but when we were doing it, we then changed the noggins to 1.3, because what we found is we kept getting in the way of the light switches. Uh, the light switch height now, I think is top of switch. I'm not an electrician, maybe 1.2. So what we do, run your mark, get, measure it 1.3 metres, do it on one side, do it the other, 1.3, and it doesn't really matter, you can do 1.2 if you want, we just found it was better when we were dealing with services to be running it at 1.3 metres. So run a line through, find your mark from where we did, then just draw it on. You don't have to be too pedantic about this. Noggins really don't need to be that precise, but it looks nice when they're all running through. It's part of the job, isn't it, I suppose. So, last two. Then what I do, in theory they should all be equally placed. That's never the case. <laughs> so what I do is get a little off cut get an off cut and measure each one individually, write them down 
And then by the fourth one, just double check your measurements work and then just start whacking them in. So measure each one as so, 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 so. And then writing down in your new pen and paper off cut of timber. Now one little note, when you are measuring, you don't want to do it so it's too tight because what you can do is you can flex the timbers and then um, if you push, if you have too much of um, a cut and if it's too big, then you're going to flex this one and it's going to have a knock on effect and what you'll find is the measurements that you've wrote down, they'll essentially be wrong from that point onwards because everything's been pushed, even though if it's a mill, if every bit of timber has been pushed too far, then you're going to lose a mill on each one and then you have um, a recurring effect. So what you want is really to be, when you are measuring, just be quite accurate where the gap is. Just try and do it so it's pretty much in the middle and your, your readings are quite, quite precise basically. I mean it takes a bit of practice but it just makes it a lot easier when you are writing them down to try and get them right so then you won't have a knock on effect and it goes out of hand. So it's fairly easy once you've got your cuts, whack them in place. First one here, just follow your lines. Again, you shouldn't struggle too much as long as you didn't cut them too tight. You want to fit nice and snug, line it up, put it from the side. The same under there. Then you can also get it from the back edge, which is a lot easier actually. Now a tip, you don't have to do this, but it just makes it a lot easier when you're doing noggins, is to stagger them. So, I'm going to stagger them from the top. So now I can get to the back edge of it. That's one. Two. And always check your timber is flush with the one you're bedding into. That's it. Follow that through, and that's how you do your doggins. And that's how you can tell I don't do it every day. These little bad boys. That was a good mess. That was pretty good as well. So, that's how you can tell I'm not a proper chippy. But, that is a full process on how to put a, and fix a wall up. The next thing obviously is plasterboard and plaster. Now, if you want to learn the full process of plastering, as in what you do after this stage, then sign up to our welcome course. The link's below. And um, follow our channel, we are basically mainly aiming just for plastering. So if that's something you're looking interested or, or interested in looking into, then sign up to our free course. Thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And uh, yeah, thanks again. See you soon.